Thank you very much. Uh, any, everyone can hear me? Cool, okay. So, the well quick cover. Um, brief introduction about me. Unlike Damien Conway, he clearly stated yesterday that he hates C and C++. Um, I feel the other way. So, this is what I feel about Lisp and Perl. Perl to me seems like a hacking language, which is fine. I'm not passing judgment. But uh, I am not a Perl hacker. So I, uh, I want to disclaim that I love C, I love C++, and I also love Lisp. So everything we're going to see today uh, is probably not due to my level of knowledge of Perl, but despite my knowledge of Perl. Um, I'm going to try to go a bit fast because I only have 20 minutes. So what exactly are we trying to achieve? We would like for a given Perl program to find the lines that were actually executed during runtime, and hopefully without any large impacts on CPU and memory. So that's like one example of, of a type of program that we would like to work on. Um, it's kind of contrived, but uh, uh, if you look at the uh, sub my apps, um, we have code that may not always be executed because of the ifs. Um, and therefore, the lines that are actually executed for that code will vary on every run, depending on what parameters you give it. Um, um, and in some cases, uh, if your inputs for that program are always positive, there will be lines in there that will never be executed. So the purpose of the Velcro cover is to point you to the lines that may be never executed in your code base so that you can try, of, try to, to delete or clean them up and uh, get rid of dead code. So can we do this? Yes, we can. And uh, how to get inspiration for how to arrive to the idea that we have uh, uh, implemented, let's take a simplified version of the code. So that still has at least one line that, that may or may not be executed. Um, and we take a look at that program using Perl and Mo concise. Please raise your hand if you have no idea what that does. Okay, so there are some people here who don't know that, what that is. Um, if you run Perl and Mo concise with those um, options, you get a dump of your program. Basically, the O module um, gives you uh, a dump of your code in several different formats. And that's one of the formats you get where you see that's basically the op tree for the program. If you look carefully, you will see that there are a couple of lines that have this next state thing. And next to the next state thing, you will see um, file names and lines of code in there. So we have three lines with next state with lines four, five, and eight. And if you look at the original program, you will notice that those three lines are exactly the lines that are executed when you run the program, almost. Almost because line six for that particular instance will also be executed, but Concise doesn't know that until you actually run the program. But this seems like a good start, right? This seems like, hmm, so maybe with this uh, information that I get from Concise, I kind of could get my hands onto the lines that are actually executed. So, a little introduction um, to the Perl op tree, so a bit more detail uh, of what we were looking at right there. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, when Perl compiles your program, basically what it does is create a, something close to an abstract syntax tree uh, that represents the same instructions that you're going to run. And then Perl has a large dispatch table. So for each of the ops in that uh, tree that you see there, Perl knows how to go to the dispatch table and fill that particular node in the tree with that routine in the dispatch table. If you look at the... Um, uh, all the opcodes in that dispatch table, which is basically, by the way, it's in the uh, file 
op names that h in the Perl distribution. There's one of them called op next state. So Perl knows how to handle that op. It has its own code to do it. But what's interesting is that next state is the same thing that we were looking at with Perl concise. So what Perl concise was showing us was that on those three lines, we were using that op to generate the code. So next state, the op, we have a dispatch table. So maybe this is crazy enough and this could work. We could try to hook into that and see what we get. So that's exactly um, the evil plan that I'm gonna show to you. So what do we do? What, what, what's this plan? We created a new access module, and yes, this has to be done at the C level because this is very low level. Um, and we will hook into that uh, Perl dispatch table so that every time Perl uses the dispatch table to say, hmm, I'm, I have a next state here, I'm gonna take the routine associated to next state and put that in my node, in, in the uh, syntax tree, we will actually put our own version of, of our routine that will do something else besides doing the, the usual um, next state handler, we will do our own stuff in there. <coughs> our own stuff will be collecting the information that we saw that line being executed. And then at the end, when the program exits, we will dump all, the, all of that information and we will profit, hopefully. So, how do we store that data? It's funny that we still see those kinds of pictures in, in movies every time someone tries to convey to you, ooh, computers, yeah. So, how do we store the data that we will gather? Um, basically, what we have here is one bit of information per each file and line, right? So that's, that's all we want. Uh, this is not code profiling. We don't really care about how many times we see that line. We do care about whether we saw the line or we didn't. There could be multiple files because we've, our code uses or requires other modules. We will have more than one file. And of course, per each file we will have more than one line probably. So in the end, that points to having a hash of all the file names. And for each of those files, we will have a bit set. Um, we implemented in the most obvious way. So what we're looking for is to quickly set one of the bits in that bit set. We don't really care about intersection or union or any other fancy bit set operations. So we can actually really, really use just one bit per line of code that we see. So, this could have impacts, right? It's obvious that if you do crazy shit in your uh, interpreter as you're running the code, bad stuff could happen. So what do we care for? What, what should we, we be looking for uh, beforehand? Extra CPU when we execute a line, extra memory, also for uh, all, all the coverage information, and hopefully the computer will not go down in flames, and we didn't actually know if this would happen or not. So every time you uh, meddle with the uh, Perl internals, you, know, you don't know what's gonna happen. So, <laughs> demo time. Have fire extinguisher ready, please, because things could blow up. So let me see if I can do this. Yeah. Okay. Why is it not going there? Ah, it's refusing to go. Probably because this is full screen. And of course, it's right where, where's the goddamn green thing? I don't see what I'm doing. Oh, there. Command tab. Command H. Command H. That will hide the window. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Of course.
course presentation. Yeah. Oh well. Maybe there. I'm trying to move this terminal. Ah, oh, there we go. Hey. Okay. So let me clear that. Out. So again. So this is again the original code we're looking at. Um, and uh, if I run that, um, so I am running that. Uh, let me see if I can. Can we see that? Yeah. Okay, so absolute value is zero, it's zero. Wow. And uh, no, minus four is four. Okay. So the code runs. And uh, I don't have any any generated files from table quick cover. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change that line. I don't have the fancy, I, I like the stuff you used. I have to type this. So, so I just, I just use the file, uh, the module. I'm gonna rerun again uh, with a positive bound. So for five. So still get the same value, but now I also have uh, data there. I generated a new file, and uh, if I, it's a JSON file, so I'm gonna just type it into JQ. So we got some nice information here. We have file apps at PL, those were the lines covered. So six, all of those are in the main routine. What's interesting here is that we ran line 21, but didn't run line tw lines 22 and 23 because we gave it a positive bound. Um, if I gave it a zero, I get a zero. Now, of course, I have to cover it files, and I need to pick the right one here. Um, it's actually easier to let's rerun this again. And now we get lines 21, 22, and 23. So it actually works. It, dynamically registers every line that was actually executed. Okay, so let's see if I can go back to my presentation. Okay, good. Um, so, back to where we were. So how am I doing on time? Five seconds, okay. I'm assuming you're gonna wanna have some questions, so how do we do this? I'm gonna skip some slides at the end. How do we build this contraption? Um, it's actually very little, very few lines of C code. Um, we have an XS module that when you use it through the import function, we end up calling this function here, and what that, that function does is we take the up next state member in the PLPP adder array, which is the dispatch table that Perl has for all the upcodes. We store, we remember the original value, and we set a new value in the array which, with our own function. And that own function, what that does is call the original um, here. So we call the original and, and remember what that original function gave us back. Uh, that's a an improvement that I'm not gonna cover because I'm running out of time. And then once we have run the original, we call our own function with those two arguments. That is the current file that's being, 
executed and that is the current line that's being executed. And that's it. There's more in this uh, module, of course. There are some improvements I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go over. So I'm gonna skip uh, the evolution of this thing. Um, so a couple of improvements. And uh, dock footing, this is actually more interesting, I think. Do we actually use this? Yes, we are using this in, our, in one of our web environments. Uh, we see no impact at all. This is in production, in live code, no impact at all in startup time. We end up using about 100 megabytes more memory than without the module, um, which is not too bad. Memory is cheap anyway. Uh, and what we do is we generate all of those files many times over. Every time we have a visitor on the page, we get a new one or more of those files and we collect them and aggregate them. And so what we end up with is like the union of all the coverage uh, information that we gather. And from that, we generate some reports. We, originally, we used the well cover reports, but now we have written our own. That's one example of what you could do with this. So in there, we are seeing that uh, the if branch is not being executed, which is awesome because the if branch is for ipsd uh, code and the else branch is for ASCII uh, values, so it would be a big surprise if we were seeing the uh, if branch being executed. So that's another check that this actually works. And that's it. Uh, and uh, of course, I didn't implement this all on all of myself. Uh, there were a lot of people helping here. Mattia was the original uh, creator of this crazy idea. I just took it and ran with it. Uh, Sawyer helped me a lot. Uh, he prodded me, yeah, go, 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 and do it. Steven was also a lot of help. Vikenti, Steven and Vikenti have provided some patches for those improvements I didn't have time to go over, which are basically, we end up using a bit more memory, but we're also registering the compiler face where your line is being executed. So that's interesting. And P5P Club is our internal um, group at Booking where we do all this crazy shit. Uh, so thanks to them for all their help. Uh, this is in Metacipan. You can get it there. Uh, the source code is in GitHub. And HR made me do it. Uh, that's actually our office uh, at Booking.com. No, actually, no people ride their bikes on that red thing, but it's kind of cool. And we're always hiring people in answer. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? So, so one of the, uh, I mean, it's great how fast it runs. One of the limitations, though, is that it's only able to see that a line was executed, not necessarily which path on the line. So if I have a complicated line, I don't know that. R Right, if you, if you have a line that has like several statements separated by semicolon, you get one, one bit of information. Okay. Yeah. Is, it, uh, is the module packed with some aggregation tool? Can we already do some analytics uh, on, from multiple runs from the... Uh, uh, so what, what's in GitHub is just this, the EXS module. The reports and all the aggregation is internal tooling for us because it's kind of convoluted the way we FTP files from one side to the other and then we mix them together. I'm, I'm wrong, actually the, uh, the distribution on GitHub includes aggregation of files. So yeah, but it's, I mean, it's like 50 lines of parallel code that you could actually write yourself. This is all JSON files, so all the, the output is JSON files. Anyone? Probably, yes. Uh, we were kind of blinded by the stupidity of, yeah, this seems cool, let's do it. And uh, it actually works, <laughs> so. Did you guys get any particular, um, were you able to measure the, the overhead of this in any way, uh, speed-wise? Yeah, as I mentioned, there's no measure uh, noticeable speed-wise. Uh, it also happens that we preload a lot of stuff at Booking. So we take the hit at the beginning, and one of the improvements that we did was, okay, it, 
he's saying I'm out of time. So let me answer your question. One of the improvements we did is that after you have seen one line, we restore the original opcode. So that line will never go over our code path again. Therefore, it tends to converge very quickly to the final set of covered lines, and then the only overhead you pay is for lines that you have not seen yet, which are fewer than the original set of lines that you preload. Uh, and uh, he's the boss, so I guess I'm done. Thank you.